Well, Peter Koronov is a lecturer in the Department of Mercantile and Labor Law at the University of the Western Cape. He joins me now on the line for a better understanding on the case. Peter, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, well this is a last-ditch attempt by a Makate. Uh, perhaps we could start with your sense of why, in the initial judgment of the High Court in Johannesburg, this case was effectively thrown out on several technicalities. Why was that? So, it is a bit of a Hail Mary pass in, in, in that sense. Um, the High Court in, uh, initially did find uh, on a balance of probabilities that there was a contract between Mukate and, and the head of product development at Vodacom at that point in time. But they ultimately said that they did not feel, given the, the, the structure that Vodacom had at that point in time, there were several co uh, subsidiary companies with a holding company, that the agreement which he had with a particular director could ultimately hold the bigger structure of Vodacom um, bound in, in, that, in that regard. So it hinges on a, on a question of whether or not this particular director created ostensible authority and whether or not that ostensible authority created uh, a reasonable misrepresentation that he had the ability to contract on behalf of Vodacom. Now, on that particular point, the, uh, the High Court in, in, in Johannesburg said, no, we don't actually feel that there is a case that's been made to argue that uh, Vodacom should be held bound on the basis of ostensible authority. And that's one of the points on which um, Mr. McCarthy's uh, legal team is now appealing to the Constitutional Court because they feel that there's been an, er an error on the law and how that particular aspect has been interpreted. So that's one of the, of, of the, of the technical points, given that the, the, the judge in, in, in Johannesburg just said, well, if you wanted to raise that legal argument, you should have actually raised it from the get-go. You should have put it in pleadings, which they, which, which they held that it wasn't properly done. Mm -hmm. um, the second point, which is a little bit more of a problematic one, um, is the fact that uh, the, the judge also ruled that the claim that Mr. McCarthy had um, against Vodacom had effectively expired, given the fact that he should have put it in um, years ago and not when he instituted the case in 2008. And mm -hmm. The normal position in South African law is when a claim arises, you need to institute suit based on that claim within three years of, of, of the event actually occurring. And it's common cause that he didn't actually institute that claim within three years. It was something like six or seven years later. Okay, and now, that's where I, I want to come in if, if, yes. if I can. I mean, it does seem that intellectual property law has many gray areas, I mean, at least in South Africa. Is that fair to say? It is fair to say that intellectual property law has a fair amount of gray, uh, gray areas, although I, I would actually say that on this particular case, um, it, it, there are aspects relating to intellectual property law, but it's actually more of a con contractual matter. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's a simple question of, um, was there an agreement between Mr. McCarthy and Vodacom that if this process was implemented, at least call me process, would he get a cut thereof? Yeah. Um, so... Um, there is actually there's a there's a big tangential dispute um, as to whether or not Mr. McCarthy was in fact the inventor of Please Call Me. I had a very interesting conversation um, just after my article was published with um, one of the individuals who patented um, NTN's competitive system, um, and they in fact patented it before Vodacom's one. Now they are of the opinion that you know Mr. McCarthy was not the inventor of Please Call Me, and that the entire case is frivolous. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily know if I agree there because it's it's common cause um, that. That you can have competing patents. It is possible in in in, in commerce to have something um, which is which is novel in a different way from something else, and then have those products be substitutable in nature. So, um, whereas patent law is a relevant aspect of the case, I would say it's much more a question of of, of, of of the interpretation of a contract and whether or not that contract can, in good faith, and should given the circumstances of the case, be enforced. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there. Peter, thanks very much indeed for talking to us. Thank you so much. Take care.